It's the silhouette that brings fear. 70 tons of armored firepower that can kill once every four seconds. In every corner of the world, the tank has proved all-conquering, the iron fist that crushes armies and shatters morale. These mighty machines of war represent the culmination of a centuries-old struggle to perfect the art of mobile armored combat. Most generals would want to go to war with the tank. This is the 2nd Platoon D Company, part of the famed 1st Cavalry Division of the United States Army. We're riding out with them as they advance into the field at Fort Hood, Texas. They're aboard the Abrams M1A2, the culmination of a century of tank design. As this killer machine is put through its paces, we'll reveal how the tank was perfected over time. The gun has evolved into an awesome weapon that can take out a moving target three kilometers away. Tank! Call left tank first! Identify! Fire and just! On the way! Warheads can now punch through 800 millimeters of steel. Tank armor has had to become strong enough to repel weapons like these, yet remain light enough to maintain a tank's speed and mobility. The effectiveness of this, the ultimate tank, was proven in 1991 when the Abrams first saw action. During Operation Desert Storm, over 1,500 Abrams tanks went head-to-head -head with 4,000 Iraqi tanks under the command of Saddam Hussein. Despite the appalling conditions, the Abrams had the edge, according to Lieutenant General Paul Funk. We were on a 25-kilometer front, and the winds were gusting up to 60 miles an hour. I mean, I called the cavalry squadron commander, the great Terry Tucker, and I said, what's your visibility like? He said, one to 300 meters. But we know they're here somewhere. Right after that, boom, we slammed into them. And I can still see that fight with uh, the tracers, a pause, and then a tank turret going 60 feet in the air when all that ammunition and everything else blew up as a result of the hit by our tankers. In four days, U.S. forces wiped out most of the Iraqi tanks without losing a single tank crew member. The ease with which the fast-moving, fast-shooting Abrams hauls its 70 tons around the battlefield belies the humble beginnings of this quintessential war machine. Compared with the plodding war horse of World War I, the modern Abrams is a thoroughbred. Its padded tracks can last the course for up to 3,000 miles and give the tank agility at speed. But it's taken almost a century to get to this point. During the Battle of the Kursk in the summer of 1943, wave after wave of Russian T-34s proved too much for the German armoured divisions. Sixty years later and the bigger, heavier Abrams can cross the battlefield at over 65 kilometres an hour. As well as speed, it boasts the tank's second great asset, a powerful gun. This gun can launch deadly projectiles that kill at a range of three kilometers. But first, you have to find your enemy and get them in your sights. In Operation Desert Storm in 1991, Outnumbered U.S. tank forces were fighting on unfamiliar terrain, in atrocious conditions, and at night. 
But when it came to hunting down their targets, the Abrams had the technological edge. They had night capability, but we had the thermal imaging sites and capabilities, and so we could see about at night three times farther than they could. First contact this unit had with the enemy came in poor visibility at night. We got off the first set of rounds. The Iraqis were turning their turrets at the same time. We got off the first set of rounds. Two thirds of the Iraqi tanks were on fire. The next volley from our guns before they could fire, and all of them were dead. The Abrams thermal imaging system works by detecting any object on the battlefield radiating heat. Because it sees heat, not light, it can work in pitch darkness. Using his thermal imaging screen, the tank commander scours the horizon. An enemy tank appears as a hot silhouette. Its heat signal shines brightly on the screen. He passes this on to his gunner sitting in front of him. Our job is to work together as a team. We had a gunner's position here. He's the guy they call the killer in the hunter-killer team, and I'm the hunter. They've located the target. To fire accurately and kill, the gunner needs to know the exact range. Fire and adjust. I have a laser range finder. When I see the target, I'll press these buttons here. It sends out a laser, which comes back and gives me a range to that target. The laser rangefinder is the last word in accuracy. It works by sending a laser pulse in a narrow beam towards the target and measuring how long it takes for the pulse to bounce off and return to the Abrams. As the speed of light is constant, it's a simple calculation for the onboard computer to make. Thanks to their laser technology, the Abrams crew can seek out and hit a moving target while traveling at full speed over rough terrain. The gyros in an Abrams tank keep the gun barrel steady even as the tank crosses the roughest terrain. By fitting further gyros, it's possible to keep the gun locked on target so it can fire on the move with accuracy. The Abrams is clad in layers of composite armor designed to offer the best protection for its crew. In the first Gulf War of 1991, superior armor gave US forces another tactical edge. Lieutenant General Paul Funk. In Desert Storm, we knew we could not be penetrated in the frontal 60-degree arc, which is generally the best protected part of any fighting vehicle. Uh, we knew that we, we could not be penetrated at ranges uh, over 500 meters. So our idea was we were going to stand off at least 500 meters in any kind of a direct fire fight with tanks or with their missiles, and we believed we could defeat them without losing our own crews. In fact, that proved to be true. Good armor meant Abrams crews felt safe enough to get in closer, then hit harder with their powerful gun. Explosive reactive armor marked a watershed in the battle between weapons and protection. New technologies mean the future may lie with active armor systems that detect and detonate warheads before they get close to a tank. For designers, this is the holy grail. They could take away tons of passive, heavy, conventional armor and devise smaller, lighter vehicles. This would answer some strategists who feel that the concept of the tank is outdated, 
and that modern armies need faster vehicles for rapid reaction forces. Do we need tanks anymore? I mean, that's, that's for other people to decide, but we better think about it. This evolution has been an armor anti-armor, mobile protected firepower against the enemy's counter. I think you're always going to have a tank-like vehicle. Hell, let's not call it a tank anymore. I don't care. Call it a horse. But I think what we have to have is, what is it that's going to fulfill the role that the tank plays today on tomorrow's battlefield?